How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Yuko Smitty. What follows is the gospel truth, and anyone who disagrees is objectively, certifiably wrong. No, what follows is my opinion, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and reactions and feedback in the comments. But this is just my opinion based on a few years of playing and making videos and helping other people and teaching. And these are 10 things that I've noticed people do that kind of hold them back from developing as fast or as well as they could. So it's 10 reasons you are not improving on the U. Could be you, could be anyone. But let's start with number one. The first thing I noticed a lot of people doing is playing with a lot of tension. So reason number one, people aren't learning and developing and growing as fast as they can on the uke because they're playing with too much tension. They're squeezing the uke, they're fretting harder than they need to, uh, and this tension goes up their arms, into their shoulders, into their necks. It's bad all around. Tension is the enemy to good playing because it's gonna make it hurt to play, it's gonna be harder to play for long periods of time, you're gonna squeeze your tone, uh, kind of stifling, choking off the tone of the instrument. Ukes are small, right? You need to let them breathe a little bit. Uh, there's just so many reasons not to play with a lot of tension. Now, there might be times when you are strumming really fast, and you might have to have some tension, but for the most part, you don't need it. And for the most part, as a general rule, tension is the enemy of good playing. So, reason number one, people don't improve as well as they could is they play with too much tension. They need to relax, they need to learn to loosen up, literally and metaphorically. So that brings us to number two, which is very closely related. People don't improve as well as they could because they don't learn good basic technique. These are all things that are gonna be covered in a good beginner's course, or if you have a teacher, but learning where to strum, learning not to do things like this, using one finger all the way up, learning not to make a D like this, learning where, how to position your fingers for finger picking, where every finger gets its own string, things like that, just good solid technique. Playing kind of, you know, more or less like this. Uh, I'm guilty of doing this sometimes where I'm trying to reach for a chord, but you know, not having wonky posture or whatever, just having good solid technique. That becomes the foundation which you can build upon for years of improvement. So a lot of people don't improve because their technique stinks and they don't take the time to learn that properly and then that becomes really hard to undo that down the line. That brings us to number three. Uh, and this is kind of funny coming from me because I've always been kind of more of a play-by-ear guy and not huge into notation, music theory, whatever. But people don't improve because they don't learn any music theory whatsoever. If you don't learn any music theory whatsoever, I'm sorry, but it's going to hold you back. If you don't know... Uh, how a scale works, why a chord is the one, three, and the five of that scale, how to make a chord minor, how, what a, the Nashville number system is for, you know, play the one, four, five, and you know the two is minor, and why a seventh chord works and leads you back to the one chord, things like that. Like, that basic music theory stuff is so helpful and so foundational. Uh, in my own experience, it helped me a ton. Two things that I got a lot of value out of are number one, Brad Bordessa, liveukulele.com has a good, it's called Street Theory course. And it's just like two, I don't know, 20 something minute videos and a PDF that go with it. I'm just like the basic things you need to know to understand how to jam, why things work the way they do, how chords work, how to, uh, you know, number chord system, chord uh, uh, progressions, things like that. And then another one is uh, Music Theory for Ukulele. I believe it's David Shipway. Uh, it's a book. That has a lot of good info as well, and it's on Kindle. So that leads us to number four. A big reason people don't improve is they don't learn scales. Now, beyond the C scale, there's tons of other ones to learn. And I think a good place to start is the major scales and some pentatonic scales. I think if you learn those two, it really helps you to be able to jam in just about any scenario other than like really advanced jazz or something really out there. You know, country, rock, pop, Hawaiian, folk, anything like that, like it's gonna be in G, C, D, you know, maybe an A minor in there somewhere and learning minor scales is a little bit at the next level. But if you just learn the major scales and pentatonic, you'll be able to jam in a lot of different keys and it'll help you out so much. And some people hate scales and they just neglect them completely. And I think they do so at their own peril. So that's number four. And that leads us to number five, which I think the fifth reason people don't improve like they could is they never play with a metronome or a backing track. 
I think it's really easy to develop bad habits of playing with poor rhythm, where if the song is loud and exciting, you play faster. When it's calming down, you play slower. If you had a coffee, you know, maybe you'll play too fast. If you didn't have a good night's sleep and you're tired, your playing will slow down. If you get nervous, you know, and our heartbeat changes and things like that. But when you mess with the rhythm, which is the heartbeat of music, it kind of really messes the song up. And it's really difficult to play with others when your rhythm stinks and you're not playing in time. So a metronome is really helpful. Some people despise metronomes. So I will say, try out backing tracks. They're kind of like the fun version of a metronome. It's still in time, but you're playing along with the song and you know if you're off or not because Picking up bad habits with rhythm, it's really hard to undo. And that's kind of the foundation for everything. You can play a wrong note and get away with it. You can kind of play a wrong harmony chord and get away with it. But if your rhythm is way off, ugh. if people can't tap their toe, their foot, or their, you know, clap their hands along with what you're playing, it's really hard for them to get into what you're playing. So play with a metronome or with backing tracks. That brings us to number six. The sixth big reason people aren't improving and they're being held back, is they never record themselves. Now, I don't mean you need to start a YouTube channel and you need to post everything to Reddit, but just to record your playing and look back at it on your own time individually and not post it necessarily anywhere, is so helpful because you get this objective third-person view of what you're doing, what it sounds like, what your technique is, where you're muff muffing a note or messing something up, and it's hard to get that first person in the moment while you're playing. And so uh, through the years I've recorded myself, before I ever had a YouTube channel, I would record myself in videos and it's been really nice to go back and see those. I see my improvement, I see what I need to improve at. It's also cool, it tracks your progress because things that were difficult a long time ago aren't anymore. So I think it's a huge tip, It's just record yourself. It doesn't mean you need to be oversharing everything online, but I think it gives you that objective feedback of what you need to improve at and it's easy to let ourselves off the hook in the moment through your own eyes playing. But when you see it on a video, it tells you what you messed up and it's very obvious and it's objective feedback. So that is my number six. People don't improve because they never record themselves. Okay, number seven. This I'm going to borrow from James Hill. He has this quote in the Ukulele Way course. Great course, recommend it by the way. And it's going to go right into this point. He says, YouTube is not really a classroom. And the thing is, when you're on YouTube, and it's funny because this is a YouTube channel, but like, if they're gonna, the algorithm's gonna show you what they think you're gonna watch. It's gonna show you what's interesting. It's like a golden retriever, ball, squirrel, shiny object syndrome, right? YouTube is just gonna show you random things. And so people trying to learn on YouTube, it's like, if you exclusively learn from YouTube, you might learn a song here, you might end up getting a tab there, you might get a technique there, but it just becomes so jumbled that it's not systematic. So my seventh reason that people don't improve is they don't learn from something systematic. Pick a good course, pick a good book, get an actual teacher, get something that forces you to go from level to level. Because if you just go off random YouTube videos or whatever random tab you want to learn, you can kind of chase your tail and you don't necessarily know that you're systematically improving and you might be missing things along the way, which ties back into the technique and the tension. You might be picking up bad habits that you don't know because you're not being taught in a systematic way. Now, we're all doing this for fun. I hope none of us have aspirations of making millions of dollars with this thing because I don't think that's possible. Uh, it's not, you know, a very popular instrument in the grand scheme of things, sorry. But, you know, it's fun. That's why we do it. It's kind of like free mental health therapy in a lot of cases. But um, you still need to have some sort of systematic improvement. And if you're only doing random things and never following a a lesson book or a course or whatever, I think it can really hold people back because you see people that just chase their tail and they don't get any better because they're just doing random things. And I am super guilty of that. The best, the thing I got the most help from was going through the ukulele way, James Hill, or Brad Bordess's left hand technique for ukulele or something like that because it just kind of forces you to go from stage to stage and make sure every step of the way you're improving. So that brings us to number eight and I know I'm gonna sound like your mother telling you to eat your vegetables. I won't dwell on this one because it's very self-evident, but it's good to be reminded. People don't improve because they don't practice consistently. Just pick five, 10, 15 minutes a day and practice every day or five days a week. And you'll see so much better gains than if you don't pick up your uke for a month and then try to practice for a few hours or you pick it up once a week for an hour. It's just that every day, little bit, little bit repetition, practice consistently, I'm boring myself with that one because we all know it. I sound like I'm nagging. P 
People don't improve because they don't practice consistently. So don't be one of those people. Practice consistently. Okay, that brings us to number nine. And this is where I'm not able to help myself because I'm a high school teacher. And so we're going to get into a little bit of learning theory, pedagogy. So there's this guy named, why is this guy named Lev Vygotsky? He had this theory, the zone of proximal development, or people call it ZPD. And basically you have these three concentric circles, like a archery target, right? The middle one is what you can already do and you've mastered it and you have no trouble with. The outer circle is something that is too far beyond what you can currently do. So that would be giving calculus to a kindergartner. But there's this middle area, which he called the zone of proximal development, which the theory is this is where the best learning occurs. It's a little bit outside of what you can already do, but it's not too challenging. It's challenging, but not too difficult. And this is learning new songs that push you a little bit, getting into a new genre you've never tried before, uh, trying to do something that's a little bit beyond your comfort zone, pushing yourself to record a video and post it somewhere. It's like you're going to do a little bit better when you push yourself that a little bit outside your comfort zone. We ha we're all guilty of kind of like doing the same chord progressions or the same scales or the same well-known songs over and over and we just fall back on that and it's like this well-worn path or this neural network, but it's good to push ourselves out of that. When you push yourself out of that, it forces you to learn, it forces you to improve, and it gives you this new perspective because you're trying to strive towards a new goal and you're not there yet and that's a motivation. So that leads us into our last one. The last one is the reason people don't improve as well as they could is they always play in C or F or G or a very common chord uh, key, very common key. But C is the big one. The ukulele is kind of already in C, C6, right? If you just play string four, three, and two, you have a C chord. So you start learning, oh, if I just fret that first string, really cool interesting sounds and that's great and that's a good stepping point stone stepping stone stepping point I don't know it's a good point to start from but then you kind of go on to different keys it's really easy to just stick to C over and over and over and if you do that uh, it becomes a rut that becomes hard to get out of you got to learn to play in different keys so force yourself to learn some jazzy chords force yourself to learn things in a key that you wouldn't normally play it in leaf B flat or something like that and an experiment because it becomes really automatic and really kind of robotic to just go back to C over and over and over or maybe F or G but C is the big one so that's my final reason that people don't improve is they don't learn to play in different keys outside of C they always come back to C and I've been guilty of that because it's so so easy to play in C and it sounds so nice but Push yourself to get out of that C rut. C, F, G7, C, F, G7. How many times have we played that? Try something different. Okay, so those are my 10 reasons. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Like I said, this is the objective gospel truth. And if you disagree, you're wrong. No, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts and your comments. And do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I missed some things? Do you think I overemphasized or underemphasized some things? Let me know what you think. Uh, this is my opinion. And hopefully somebody got something out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, consider doing that. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.